Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? I've been doing some computer performance experiments lately and the results are interesting, so I figured I'd share. Buckle in, this is a pretty nerdy one. Long story short, my internet connection isn't very fast and uploading the files for my YouTube videos can take hours, especially since I'm working in 4K these days. I wanted to find out what my options are for transcoding the files to be smaller so they'd upload faster, yet still retain good quality. But I didn't also want to wait forever for the conversion to happen, because then I'd just be trading one delay for another. My tool of choice for this is Handbrake. It's a free open source video converter that's cross-platform and pretty well known, but also very capable. Not only can it do software-based video transcoding, but it's also able to leverage the hardware acceleration found in many modern CPUs and video cards. And it's this part that I'm most interested in. So I set up a process to test some things out. From my own YouTube video archives, I picked two episodes, an older one that's 1080p and a newer one that I edited in 4K. Both use the H.264 codec and are decently long as to properly stress the hardware without something like Turbo Boost skewing the results. I did all these tests on my first gen ThinkPad X1 Extreme because it's well suited to test three different ways of transcoding video. It has a core i7-8750H with 6 cores and 12 threads and a base clock of 2.2 GHz, so I'd expect it to perform somewhat decently at software-based encoding. That chip also includes integrated Intel UHD 630 graphics, which opens up the option of using a feature called QuickSync. This is some dedicated circuitry built into the CPU that's designed specifically for encoding and decoding video. The net result is that the general CPU cores are freed up to do other tasks. This laptop also has discrete graphics in the form of an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti Max-Q with 4GB of video memory. And just like with QuickSync, there's built-in hardware-based acceleration for video called NV Encode. There are a few baseline settings I applied to all the encoding tests to try to make them be as accurate as I could. The files were saved in an MP4 container, and I didn't perform any kind of video scaling. The output resolution was set to be the same as the input. Also, I turned off all the video filter options like deinterlacing. This is partly because I know my source files don't need them, but also because neither of the hardware encoders can handle them. If you use them, they get processed in software by the CPU, along with any video scaling, audio transcoding, and all of the demuxing and remuxing. Handbrake's documentation even points out that on less powerful systems, the CPU can still end up being a bottleneck to encoding performance, even if you're using something like QuickSync. So the idea was to minimize the amount of non-accelerated processing the CPU had to do in these tests to give a clearer picture of what QuickSync and NVN code are capable of. Next up was picking a quality setting. For both the 1080p and 4K tests, I went with a rate factor of 22, which is generally considered to offer good results at reasonable file sizes. So the only thing that changed between each of the tests was the actual encoding engine itself and settings specific to it. Now, just to get in front of the comments section here, I know that there are many options that can get tweaked in Handbrake to optimize various parts of the encoding process, but most people using this program probably aren't video codec experts, so I wanted to stick to settings that are as closest to real world use as possible. The first job I ran was to be a baseline, using the X264 software encoder at the fast preset, which is default. As you'd expect, it maxed out the CPU, and both the integrated and discrete GPUs sat idle. Then I ran more tests using the H264 QuickSync encoder, starting with the balanced preset. I let the laptop idle for at least 15 minutes between tests, in case system cooling played a factor in the results. No point in kicking off another encode if the machine was heat soaked from a prior run. I also ran tests using the QuickSync quality and speed presets, then moved on to the NV encode tests. I tried four different presets for those. 
And the results of these 1080p tests were interesting. Some were what I expected, but some weren't. The X264 software and code was of course the slowest, averaging 64 frames a second. It also generated the smallest file because it was able to most effectively compress the output file at the requested quality level. That's partly why it was slowest. It took its time to do a good job. QuickSync performance using the balanced and speed presets was exactly three times faster, but the files were 50% larger with a similar bump in bitrate. I kind of expected that, but the QuickSync quality preset results threw me for a loop. I figured it would be a bit slower than the others, but it was actually barely any faster than the software based encode, and the file it generated was three times larger. That's a really big difference for just a change in preset. NV encode results were even more interesting. They were all the fastest by far, but strangely the presets labeled medium, high performance, and slow all had about the same performance. The medium and slow presets generated files that were the exact same size and bitrate, and the high performance presets file was only a little bit larger. It was just the preset named default that had an appreciable difference in performance, about 60 frames per second slower, yet its file size was about the same as the others. Now, looking at the CPU and GPU utilization helps explain some of the differences. I should point out that the GPU utilization percent reported in Windows is an aggregate number. In Task Manager, it'll break out the various parts of the GPU, and during a test, usually only the video encoder section was active. Also, during an encode, there was always some CPU utilization, because remember, not everything can get handled by the GPU. So it stands to reason that GPU and CPU utilization would be tied together to some extent. Most of the quick sync encodes had the CPU at about 50% and the integrated GPU at 75, but the quality preset, that slowest one, only used 30% CPU and 50% GPU. The system fans didn't even really spin up at all during this test, and I felt like I could have gotten away with doing other work on the computer without really affecting the results. Things were similar for the most part with the NVIDIA accelerated encodes. Most of the profiles ramped the CPU up to somewhere between 60 and 80%, but never maxed it out. GPU utilization stayed between 65 and 85%. It was just the NV encode default preset, that one that ran a bit slower, that had the CPU at 55%, yet the GPU was maxed out for the entire run. So that was 1080p encoding, but I was curious how a 4K file would alter the numbers. In order to get access to a 4K output resolution, I had to start with an MKV preset, but I switched it back to MP4 and made all the same settings changes, including keeping an RF of 22. I didn't do the full gamut of profiles, but between software and quick sync encodes, the performance was one fourth that of the 1080p tests. This makes sense since 4K is four times the information of 1080. The resulting bit rates were not four times larger, but I think that comes down more to the way the H.264 codec works and not these specific encoders. File size doesn't necessarily track linear with resolution, but encoding performance does seem to. Now H.264 is a very common codec and it produces reasonably small files. But H.265, it's growing in popularity, and it's able to make even smaller files at the same level of quality. H.265 plus 4K is kind of a torture test, but QuickSync and NV Encode in this laptop claim to be able to do it, so I reran all the same tests. All of the encodes took longer to process, which isn't surprising at all, but they were also very consistent with how they performed compared to the previous tests. The software X265 encode was just grueling at 9 frames a second, down from 16 with X264. QuickSync still showed differences between its presets, with the quality setting only pulling off 13 FPS, but like before, it kept CPU utilization so low you could use the computer for other stuff. All of the NV encode presets performed pretty much identically within one frame per second of each other, 
though the default profile didn't differ like it had in the 1080p tests. These results were so similar to each other, I started to wonder if there was maybe only like one internal setting that Envy and Code actually had for doing H.265, and that maybe the sliders and handbrake did nothing. So I reran a couple more tests, one with Envy and Code and another with QuickSync at RF24 this time. The change in file size and bitrate was curious. Envy and Code had produced a smaller file at RF24, like one would expect, but it was only a little different. On the other hand, the QuickSync results couldn't be more different. Just going from 22 to 24 dropped the file size and bitrate by a third. And looking at some of the H.265 size results, yeah, it's indeed a more efficient codec, sometimes by a lot. The software X.265 encode was less than half as big as its X.264 version, and the QuickSync H.265 file was about a third smaller. Now, you may be wondering, what about AMD? Unfortunately, I don't have access to a system with an AMD processor or modern video card. But AMD does, like Intel and NVIDIA, offer hardware acceleration. It's the same technology between its so-called APUs and discrete graphics chipsets, originally called the Video Coding Engine, but in 2018 saw a new version called Video Core Next. It works basically the same as the others, with dedicated circuitry built right into the processor die, and Handbrake is able to take advantage of it too. Seeing the actual performance numbers would have been interesting, but I suspect they wouldn't have been much different than what we saw out of the others. The big question is, why was there such little difference between the presets on the hardware accelerated encodes? The answer, I think, is pretty simple because this is hardware accelerated encoding. If they wanted to offer more presets or codecs, they'd have to get baked into the silicon. By its nature, it can't be as flexible as software can, so Intel, Nvidia, and AMD all had to carefully pick what features they wanted to include. And clearly, a preset for creating the smallest file size possible was a low priority. And while Handbrake certainly is a use case for this kind of technology, in the grand scheme of things, it's a bit niche. I mean, would Intel really go to the trouble of developing QuickSync just to make pirating movies more convenient? I mean, come on, we all know what Handbrake is mostly used for. In the big picture, this technology is used a lot more frequently than you may have realized. Sure, it can make converting files go faster, but it can also be used for other things like video chat applications such as Hangouts or Zoom, or when doing video capture for live streaming. For example, it's supported by OBS. NVIDIA explains how using Envy and Code doesn't detract from the performance of the video card overall. You still have the full 3D rendering capabilities, so games perform well, while at the same time, it can transcode a copy of that video to hand off for a live stream. And this hardware acceleration isn't just for encoding, it's also for decoding. This is how an inexpensive, old, or relatively slow laptop can still play back YouTube videos suspiciously well. Thinking about all of these potential uses coupled with the fact that hardware acceleration by its nature is again going to be somewhat limited in terms of what codecs and quality profiles it supports, well, that explains some of the peculiarities we saw in the handbrake results. Remember that QuickSync quality profile that was weirdly slower than the others and how it barely used any CPU? At 1080p, it still performed faster than real time. Considering the vast majority of webcams top out at 1080p, it sounds like that might just be the preset intended for video chat apps. The CPU fans stay quiet so you don't have this crazy amount of noise getting picked up yet it's still fast enough to produce a smooth frame rate. Why it's called quality in Handbrake? Well, that could just be a bug. When it comes to video encoding, it's one of those situations where you have three variables but can only pick two at the same time. Performance, quality, and file size. With all these tests, quality was a constant, but we saw that software encoding traded performance for small file sizes. Hardware acceleration tries to do everything, but clearly the results are pretty much the other way around. 
NVN code produced the largest files, but it was also the fastest by a wide margin, and the numbers, especially 4K H.265, were pretty impressive. Hopefully, these results help you better understand your options when doing any kind of video encoding. Basically, if you need the smallest file size, software is the way to go. And if you need an encode done quickly, get your GPU to do it. And if you're doing anything related to live video, see if the software you use supports hardware acceleration. This exercise also reminded me that even though we haven't seen dramatic improvements in CPU performance over the past you know, several years, that doesn't mean solid advancements aren't being made elsewhere. I could agree with an argument that QuickSync might be one of the most compelling developments in modern processor designs. That cheap computer with a slow CPU can still handle online video lessons. Your laptop can still get great battery life, even while watching YouTube in high resolution. Countless Twitch streamers can still get great gaming frame rates thanks to NVN Code and Video Core Next. Yet, in all these cases, I'd wager that the majority of people have no idea. It's this special little bit of silicon making it all happen. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.